What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Zachary Reality. I am your host, Zachary Reality. We are here live on a Thursday, March 7th, with the one and only Ben Higgins, former Bachelor. Ben, what is up? I mean, everything. Everything is up. I'm, I'm pumped to be here. I'm excited to talk everything uh, that you have going on. And here's the deal. I'm a fan of yours, so I'm I'm excited for this. Yeah, I'm. I love that you're um that you've seen my videos and that you like them. I obviously watched your season. I have just woke up, by the way. I am in California, and I've been having some sleep trouble, so mm. I am a little out of it. If I don't seem super jappy, but I'll I'll, I'll make my way. Hey, it's okay. I get it. Uh, I've been uh, I've been waking up at three o'clock. I was just telling my buddy this every day, three a.m., and not being able to sleep again for the last probably two weeks and I'm I think I'm like functioning in a state of a little bit of like anger and um it you know I just I'm not a healthy man right now so we can do this together and we'll lift each other up are you in um Colorado I am so is it one hour ahead of California yes and does that get confusing um no not now um, you know, I've been doing this. I stayed in Colorado post show one. I, it's quieter. It's more familiar to me, but it still is an, you know, an increase in excitement from where, you know, I grew up, but then, uh, I can fly back and forth pretty easy. And then, so when I come home, I, you know, I pretty much lose an hour, but when I go to LA, I can leave here at seven and land at eight yeah. o'clock. It's great. Yeah, it's great. But sometimes the times get annoying, I think, for me watching The Bachelor on the West Coast because okay. I have to wait like three hours if I don't find a way to watch it. Do you get like screeners for the episodes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so, it's a big deal. I mean, I, I think iHeart pushed for it because the I think it takes me an hour and 15 minutes to watch an episode where I, I'm assuming now it's still airing on TV for two hours. So that's 45 minutes of commercials that I I am lucky enough to not have to watch so how many days in advance do you watch the episodes uh usually on a thursday yeah but you'll never get like the finale or like a reunion no. i never get the finale never get a reunion there'll be some random episodes that they won't send out also because you i mean and i never know why they just don't show up and typically it's because it's a, a pivotal point in the season or there's a you know something they don't want to slip so that does happen too. But if it's like episodes one through four, they're always there. For sure. So if you guys listening don't know, Ben hosts the Almost Famous podcast. Mm -hmm. um, it's been going on for a long time. I've listened for plenty of years. You guys have great interviews. I've been lucky enough to be a guest twice to yeah. break down the Bachelor in Paradise tea. So I'm glad to finally have you on my show. So I'm going to put you in the hot seat. I'm going to ask you your questions and hot takes. But okay. for those who have not listened to me on Almost Famous... Do Go it. check it out. Um, who else have you guys had on recently? Who have you had on from this season? Uh, from this season, in fact, we haven't had anybody yet. Uh, we have no not way. had. Yeah, we, we used to do a few interviews it, during the season when people uh, left the show, and those always did great. But the, the thing we noticed was the stories were never complete, and so it's kind of more fun for us now to wait till the season's done airing and bring back people. I do kind of wish we would have had like the Sydney's on right in the heat of the moment i don't even know if they would be allowed to come talk to us well um, they, they yeah. haven't really gone like a, the early girls go to bachelor happy hour because that's like the home yeah right but they haven't had a lot of people get interviewed and i'm so curious for the women tell all which like is filming this week because mm -hmm. i just can't wait to hear what maria has to say and what like Leia has to say like a lot of the girls because they have been pretty silent about the drama on social media yeah they have so what are you expecting to see at the Women Tell All? I actually think in in comparison to other years, this is going to be a fairly non-dramatic Women Tell All. Damn it. Uh, I just don't think the drama that was existing was as big of or as influential as drama as other seasons. It, it just felt like they were pulling as, it, you know, the show was airing any amount of drama they could possibly find. Mm -hmm. There's some seasons, like when I was on Caitlyn's season of The Bachelorette, there was incredible content that was uh not even aired like really influential pieces of the season that weren't even aired because they had so much drama they couldn't fit it all in but like this year they aired everything they possibly could i i want to see it i'm i feel like there has been a lot of juicy stuff actually just okay like, maria has just been such a big personality and like i just am so curious what she has to say if you guys could have had on one person on your podcast from this season who would mm -hmm. it have liked to be 
Well, I think it's Maria at this point. I mean, I, I I go back and I say, you know, to go what you're just saying is you do, you do feel like there's some juiciness this season. I think the Sydney and Maria situation with Leo was probably, you know, the highest point. But there wasn't still, I mean, Sydney at times, I believe, acted like it or had moments that represented it. But there wasn't really a villain this season. Yeah. There was, there, there, there wasn't that standout person that were like, we cannot wait to see them on live television because they're going to be messy. I, I don't have that this season. I mean, I still think Maria is that personality. I think they've just changed it from like villain to just like biggest personality. Okay. Um, but I know your good friend, Ashley, your podcast host, she is close friends with Sydney. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were wondering like how she was defending her, why she was defending her because they're good friends. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that? Because I felt like watching her, we couldn't stand her. You know? Yeah. You know, Ashley had told me before the season really ever started taping that her friend was going to be on this season. And so I've gotten to hear kind of the, the the journey of Ashley being so excited to watch a show that she knew somebody on mm -hmm. before even it started airing. And then Sydney got back home and I really didn't hear much from Ashley about how it went down. Uh, she was kind of kept quiet because I think Sydney probably called Ashley and was like, hey, this is what happened. And Ashley probably got the sense that this is not going to be good. This is not going to be okay. I, I think Ashley was in a really hard situation because I do, I do know she said it. Mm -hmm. She did not agree with what Sydney was doing. Mm -hmm. The choices Sydney was making on this season, uh, Ashley did not understand, nor was she for. However, and I said this too to Ashley on Almost Famous, and I do still believe in it. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll fall on this for. Her. I do think it's admirable that Ashley stood up for her friend. It's a lot better than turning your back on your friend and kind of leaving her to the wayside because Sydney was counting on Ashley to help her feel less alone during this craziness. I don't think Ashley was like, yes, you guys should all love Sydney. She's so great. She's mm -hmm. so sweet. She wasn't saying that. She, what she was saying was I'm, she was trying her best to protect a friend who had gone on the show. That was hard. I don't think Ashley did it perfectly, but I think she did it the best she could. Uh, at the end of the day, though, I do believe Ashley – Felt like Sydney way overstepped multiple yeah. times. Yeah, I mean, you have to defend your friend, like, obviously. I think so, too. For sure. Like, she actually knows her. But on the show, like, it's just, she, it wasn't working for her. And that's kind of why she went, she got sent home. So I wonder if she'll apologize to Maria and make amends or what will happen for her if she'll get any redemption. I mean, I think it's important to note, and a lot of my commenters did note, that Ashley had a really rough season as well. Mm -hmm. She was hysterically crying every single episode. So, so yeah. I maybe Sydney has a lot of room to grow because now Ashley is like, you know, she's killing it. She's killing it. She's beloved. People got to know her better, un understand her better. I do think sure. the difference with Ashley was Ashley is um, she she has to speak up when in dramatic situations. She doesn't have it in her to stay quiet. Mm -hmm. I think people learn to love that about Ashley because she is one of those big personalities that isn't exactly a villain. Uh, but you know, can rub people maybe the wrong way at first. I am curious though. I mean, Sydney's, I was kind of trying to get on the Sydney train and trying to be like, Hey, let's just give it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it was, you know, a thousand different situations and it just aired the way it did. And then Sydney went on Instagram and kind of put out some videos mm -hmm. that I was like, she's doubling down on all of this. Like yeah. there is no apology to her here. This is a doubling down on all the behavior that happened on the show. And so it's going to be really interesting to see what she does at the live show. If she doubles down, I think it could be really hard for her uh, because I don't know if there is many people in this world that's saying, hey, what Sydney did was it, it makes sense now. Also, I think the show is with big fans of Maria. Yeah, huge, fans, huge Maria fans. If I was Sydney, I would probably authentically and genuinely find a place in my heart to be like, Hey, this thing was crazy for me. I am sorry for the things that I did and leave it there. But you, I don't think she can double down to try to be in the right here. For sure. You got to quit while you're ahead sometimes. And I was noticing that a lot of the girls put out like statements when they leave, or sometimes they address things like Jess did, whatever. But someone who stayed quiet the entire time on social media was Leia. And she got a really bad rap when she was sent home for her mm -hmm. day card thing. So I'm also curious to see what she is going to say. Um, was there any twist like that on your season with any date cards? Um, would you have wanted a girl to use it? Uh, I, I think I would have. I, I, I kind of, 
you know, if you go back to that time in life, there was a lot of uh, insecurity that I think most leads feel on this season. I, I think it's a w- really weird position for anybody to be sitting as the lead on this show and go, there's 30 people who are coming here to date me. How lucky are they? That's never the thought. It's always how lucky am I and why in the world am I sitting in this mm-hmm. position? And so I did always enjoy, or at least it was validating for me personally, when somebody would kind of step up and say, I want this time with you. I don't want to just be in this experience. I don't just want to have fun with my friends. Mm -hmm. I don't just want to be sitting at the house. What I really want is time with you, Ben. I think I would have enjoyed that. It would have felt comforting. Uh, But I also understand where Leia decided, hey, this puts me in a really awkward space with all these girls because the girl that I ultimately take the one-on-one from it's going to really hurt them and i don't want that either yeah that's a really interesting point you bring up because i feel like joey is like so desirable and he's been like the most desirable bachelor since maybe you so it's like what kind of that's very sweet um what kind of advice did you give to joey did you ever talk to him like do you see any similarities between Mm. you as a bachelor and him Mm. well i've talked to joey more than i've talked to any bachelor since my time uh he is it's funny. Um, I don't. I think it came out publicly, but I had reached out to Joey as I reach out to any new announced lead, and I send him a message and I just say, "Hey, if you ever need anything, uh, give me a call." And here's my number. Uh, and that's if you ever need anything in terms of how in the world do you contract negotiate? How in the what kind of like freedom should you ask for? How do you date all these people? Where do you get your sleep? Like, I just ask me anything and I'm an open book. I have nothing to lose here. Yeah. Uh, and I still enjoy the show. And so I want to protect the show as much as I can. I don't, but I ultimately want to protect the people going on. Joey did not reach out. Uh, never responded. Kind of said, you know, publicly at one point he said, hey, uh, that I had reached out to him. And he said he wanted to do it on his own terms. And I was like, that's fine. You go do that, buddy. Like, I'm cool with that. And then there was a moment during the filming of the season where I get a phone call from him. And ever since then, uh, we have talked very consistently um, because I think it you fi- you don't know what you're getting into until you get into it. And I think once he got into it, he was like, you know what? This would be a lot easier, a lot better if I had some other insight into how to be a bachelor. Um, I think he's doing fantastic. My advice to him is is really the same advice I give to any lead. It's don't let your head get too big and don't let it get too small. You're going to take some hits, but you're also going to be celebrated. You're probably going to be celebrated, I told Joey, more than you're going to take hits. And so make sure you stay true to who you are. And he's done that. I mean, he's done that. I've, I've been around him now outside of uh, the show since the ending of airing. Um, I've talked to him when we were on, when he was still filming the show. He stayed consistent. He is desirable. He does mm-hmm. have an authentic like um, search up for love. And he really does care. And I'll close here. I think the hardest thing is a lead is when you actually care. I think the leads who come onto this thing and say, hey, this is going to be so good for my career. Think about all this stuff I'm going to get to do afterwards. This is a pretty easy experience for them because they're kind of, uh, they're they're not very empathetic. They're not really feeling anything. For Joey, I think, I know he went on and he cared. And as a result, you're seeing that with his emotions, um, kind of with the way he responds to people. And I think it's great. I love him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a great way to respond i love him like i love him he's literally like my favorite bachelor in so long um yeah i think the last couple were just a little slow but i am interested to see how he's gonna get out of this i mean i was always team joey when he was fighting with maria but i think that a lot of the fans i've noticed mm-hmm. actually were siding with maria and like kind of giving joey some flack this week so yeah. i was a little taken back by that because he's been you know so clean the whole time which is really hard no one can do that but you and Sean Lowe. Um, what was um, what was your thoughts on Maria and Joey? I mean, I think that was kind of the first time people were like, yo, what's up? Like, yeah. you're gonna just not care about Maria? Like, huh? Yeah, that's it, it's so interesting. Uh, you know, e- even, sh- you know, Sean Lowe um, had his moments and how I, I had my moments, right? I told two women I loved them, which back then was so controversial. Yeah. And now it's like, it's just a thing. Um, You have these, every, every lead has a moment and some have more than others. And Joey really hasn't had any of those yet. The, the Maria has a team of fans that I have just really enjoyed kind of following along with. They relate to her. They enjoy her. I think she, when she talks and she, when she expresses her emotions, I think so many 
um, people watch her and go, that's a, the same way I would respond in this situation. Um, I, I don't mean this in a bad way. I think it's going to come off maybe a little negative. She's She is incredibly beautiful and put together. But I think the thing that people like about Maria, if we're honest, is she's unpolished. Like she's just her. There's no like, let me show up well for the party tonight. It's like, no, I'm going to show up how I, how I am. And yeah. I think people love that. Um, when it comes to Joey and Maria, people are going to have to find a reason to get mad at Joey. That just happens. Let's be honest, guys. They weren't going to get married. Never. Like these two were never like, I think Maria was always in my top three, but she was never in the one or two. Like the dates with Daisy and the dates with Kelsey, like we see a marriage there. For what sure. we see with Joey and Maria is just a really beautiful moment where two great humans are coming together uh, and, and trying to understand each other better. And they have an attraction for each other and they're, you know, she spices things up for him, but let's not get mad at Joey for sending her home uh, because they weren't getting married. None of us ever thought that. So let's now maybe instead of bringing the hate towards Joey, let's change our perspective and say Maria for bachelorette now. Like, what about that? Let's use that energy that you're bringing towards Joey to say, okay, we just want to see her again. And that's as, as a lead. For sure. Well, you know, you know, we all have to have takes on the fight as well. And right. I actually was team Joey because I felt like every week it was just always something with Maria. And, she, and what I like about her is how fun she is and how unapologetically herself she is. Like, she's just such a good time. But I felt like she was a little wishy-washy in the relationship. And I think that's ultimately what sent him over the edge where she was just too much to handle for him. She was just too much for, for him to keep up with her range of emotions. She was always a roller coaster. It was just always like the Maria show, whether she can yeah. help it or not. So I think he made the right decision sending her home, even though it was sad. I can't wait to see her on the tell all, but yeah. you did mention Maria for bachelorette. And I think that would be so amazing, but I just can't imagine the show doing it. Do you, do you really think that they would let her be the bachelorette? They would choose uh, her. No, I don't, uh, to be honest. I will say I thought Maria was going to be around one more week. I am surprised that Rachel made it farther than Maria after kind of the hometowns. Just because it felt like the spark with Mar uh, with Rachel was so strong for so long and then it faded. We, we haven't really seen it in a while. But with Maria blew it on the hometown because I she agree. didn't say her feelings. But also in the beginning, it was so awkward. And he was like... It's like seeing her again for the first time after the fight. Like he was yeah. ready to send her home last week, but like she had to go to hometowns. Like we had to see that story through, I felt. So I felt like he was already over her. I I think so too. I think his mind was made up. And I think he's, I've you know, this is such an important note for anybody that watches the show. Joey at this point is is so tired. Like, and, and I'm not just talking like tired, like frustrated, like tired in the sense of like he's exhausted He's mm. emotionally drained. He's physically drained. He's been traveling around the world. He's been going on dates. He's been hearing a ridiculous amount of really incredible yet really hard stories mm -hmm. and having to consume that. Take He's that exhausted. On. So I think if we're honest, and maybe if Joey was was honest with us, he would say Maria was, was pulling more energy out of him than he had at this point, and he could just no longer do it. Now, that doesn't mean we have to dislike Maria. It doesn't have, mean Never. We, have to, like, we We love Maria. She's great. Damn. Do I think she's going to be the next Bachelorette? I do not. Uh, I Okay. I think the so, closest I think so. the closest mirror to her would be, comparison would be Caitlin Bristow, which was so good. Mm. I was on that season. So great. Um, I just don't know if the show would do that following um, a Joey season. Maybe. Well, who do you think it's going to be? I know we don't know who wins yet, or maybe we do, but... Yeah. Um, I do think the it will be between the final two. And I do believe the final two are who Good I just answer. Said, Good Daisy answer. and Kelsey. It's going to be one of those two. Wow. Okay. There's something interesting about this season is how all these girls are like on TikTok doing get ready with me, recapping every episode. And my friend was like, yeah, they're probably auditioning to be the bachelorette, like trying to get the most fans now on social media. Cause that's the world we live in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny. We kind of went away from that world for a bit, right? We had a big law, as you said, the last couple seasons of the bachelor and bachelor. Well, and the bachelor has been really good. I just think, you know, if the viewership of the bachelor is down the bachelorette, typically suffers also it's it, they kind of relate to each other running parallel um 
I do think the Golden Bachelor helped kind of bring people back into the 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 show again. But for the last five years, social media followings have been non-existent from contestants. But this season, we're seeing like record numbers of people following these contestants, and I, and I do believe Maria and Daisy are kind of leading the way there. And mm -hmm. so. Uh, I do. I think it's going to be Daisy. I think it's going to be Kelsey. Uh, those are my final two. It's going to be one of them for the bachelorette. And I think that's great too. Uh, we, we, we love them also. Um, it just would, it's going to be a very different season if it's one of those two compared to what it would be if Maria was the lead. I want to see Maria do it and Daisy possibly. Mm. Um, but I guess time will tell. Um, I follow all these girls on TikTok. I just follow whoever follows me. So I'd like to know. <laughs> that's great. Um, but The Bachelor has actually always been my favorite franchise. Yeah. Like over Bachelorette, over Paradise, over Golden. Like I'm just a sucker for The Bachelor. So when it's on and it's good, that's like the best for me yeah. as a fan watching. I agree. Um, I mean, it's 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 fun for me too. I do enjoy the dynamics of the men on The Bachelorette just based, because I was there. Uh, so The Bachelorette is really fun for me. Um, I was more emotional dur during The Golden than I have for any season in a long time. I'm interested to see if when it comes back, if I'll be as emotional or if this was just kind of new and exciting to me. Um, I love paradise, but I, I know Zach, Zachary, if like I am a betting man and I think we've lost that show. And so I can't even throw that in the, the bucket anymore. I think that show's gone, which makes me sad because the Maria's of the world would be so great. They'll do another spinoff show for Paradise. But I do have to ask you, um, you just had Braden on your podcast a mm -hmm. couple weeks ago. It just made Us Weekly headlines where he was like hinting that maybe someone from his season of Paradise is back together. Did you get any hints on who that could be? I can't even think of who it would be. I mean, I, I want to talk to you about that. He did, Braden did say he's heard through the grapevine, which I think is pretty much him saying that I talked to all these people and I, I know what's going on, that there is a couple back together. Now, I, I don't, I, I can't even like if I had if I were to guess. Okay, you can help me here. Who were the couples that came out of Paradise together? We had Avon, Avon and Kylie, Kat okay. and John, Aaron and Eliza, Blake and Kylie. Um, you know, I think he was talking about Avon and Kylie, but he also could have just um, been talking out of his ass. I think it's John Henry and Cap. No, you don't. I do. There's no way. So, I, let's let's hey, let's say it here on the record. Mm -hmm. I think it's John Henry and Cat have rekindled a flame. Okay. We'll see if you're right. Um so there was this this new oil trend going on TikTok. Did you see it? No. So um just talk to John Henry because he's the welder, right? Like he works on oil or whatever. Yeah. There was this trend on TikTok where we're like, we call our parents and prank them and pretend that we're invited on a brand trip to go oil rigging and like go welding. And we record our parents' reaction. Okay. Right? So I, I did one and my dad watched it and he, I, mean, I did it on my dad and he really fell for it. It was really funny, but it got the attention of John Henry and John Henry was like, well, yo, let's go. Let's go to the oil rig. So remember we were talking about that too when I was on your podcast, yes. you were trying to explain yeah. it. Uh huh. Are you gonna take him up on this? No. Okay. <laughs> but I did. I, I would pay big money for this. I want. I want this to happen. If it was a real trip, then maybe I would have considered it. <laughs> we we still haven't heard from Exxon Mobil. Okay. Well, okay. it would be fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So getting back to the Golden Bachelor real quick. Um, who okay. do you think they're gonna pick for the Golden Bachelorette? Joan. Really? I do. I think it's Joan. I think. Um, I think it's always been Joan in their mind. Uh, and I think they kind of thought about trying other things. If, if it's not Joan, I heard a rumor the other day that it could be Kath, Kathy Lee Gifford. Are you just throwing out rumors though? Cause that's, that's, I did, it, it was mentioned on. Yeah, it was, but I think they were just joking. Oh, well, I'd like it. I would watch it. I love, I grew up loving Kathy Lee. In Regis, it was it was what I watched, you know, when I got home or, or mm -hmm. maybe it was on in the mornings. I watched it at some point there in the day, but I do think Joan is going to be the next Golden Bachelorette. Uh, I I do know. I mean, I've been around Joan a few times. She'd be really good at it, um, and I think their book it could bring out a lot of guys. I, I I feel like they're having a hard time casting 
for that season because you know guys in their 60s and 70s are like i'm not going on a crazy reality show yeah well i just had rachel riley on the podcast she's on the golden bachelor casting team and okay. she, she gave a little update that they do have a lot of like interesting stories already they they have a good group of men some okay. gil some gilfs um but they are still like looking for more people okay. so so I think that they're going to go through with it, but I think that it would be cool to have a few Golden Bachelorettes because they're all so iconic. Yeah. And then just make it more of like a paradise vibe in like the bingo halls. It'd be fun to see them all together again. I mean, these Golden Bachelor, the, the, the contestants from the Golden Bachelor are really living the best life right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we had them out in, with us in Carmel. Or we, at least we had Kathy and Susan with us. We've had them at the mansion. They are high energy. They're having a blast. They're so fun to be around. They make great television because honestly, they just don't care. Mm -hmm. And that's the best television is when they're just unapologetically themselves and we love them for it. So I would be all for it if they said, hey, we're just going to bring back the whole cast and bring in a bunch of dudes and just date on TV. I would still watch it. For sure. We saw a teaser for next week that Susan, Leslie, and Sandra will be popping up to give some advice. Yeah. Super excited about that. We also saw a tease that there's going to be a note. Um, so the note is going to say, we need to talk. And Joey is going to be reading it. Um, this is kind of fun and drama, like a little add something spicy to the finale, don't you think? What do you think is going to be in the note? I think Maria wrote the note. Really? Yeah, I think Maria wrote the note. I do think she tries to come back. And typically, if somebody's like, oh. hey, I'd like to go back and talk to the lead, the show's like, go ahead, come on down. Uh, they're not that far away. They're in Costa Rica, and so she could make it in time. I think she wrote a note that says we need to talk, and what she's going to talk to him about is, you know, why she didn't express her emotions earlier and, and how she held back. That's my guess. If it's not that, then I do believe it's Rachel, uh, and I think it could be um, just Rachel feeling like she's not in the top two uh and just kind of getting the hint because i mean at least from a viewer standpoint and, I, and i'm hoping somebody tries to argue with me maybe it's you it's very obvious to me who the top two is like it, it's so clear and so maybe she starts to feel that that's true i kind of think it was something maybe teased for the finale like in two weeks mm. um but i guess if it was a teaser for next week it's kind of confusing when they show the teasers we don't yeah. know what episode so I was thinking it was something with the final two, but that is an interesting point about Maria. But I just think that she's done. She's not going to come back. But it is. But they're also going to show fantasy suites next week, and then the women yeah. tell all the week after. So let's say Rachel goes home next week. We'll probably see her at the tell all, mm. and that also gives Maria another week on TV because she can't go to the tell all and then end back up on the show. Yeah. Right. So yeah. okay. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, the finale will be in a few weeks. Do you have any like predictions or how you want to see this end? I think it ends absolutely beautifully. I don't think there's any drama on the finale like they've been teasing. <coughs> okay. I think that what's going to happen is um, he's going to get down one knee and he's going to get engaged. And it's going to be really exciting and really happy for everybody. And it's going to be a really great love story. Here's the truth, though. I have no clue. This is not coming from a place of spoilers. I don't know how this ends. Uh, I have some context clues that I think I could probably put together and piece it. But even then, I don't know kind of how it works its way out. And so I do think, though, that he is engaged. I do think that he's very happy. I do think that this will be an iconic season of love um and i think we're all gonna be excited for it great me too i'm buckled in i'll be watching each week so thank you for sharing all your takes on joey season let us know your thoughts in the comments below um before we head out of here let's get a quick update from ben how is married life yeah what is going on what are you doing like what are your projects yeah definitely well i i'm doing really good uh life is is really fun for me in so many ways it's it's quieter uh i still get to dip my toe into into some really cool entertainment stuff and still get to be involved at some level. But uh, I spend most of my time working for Generous Coffee, which is the coffee company that I co-founded in 2017 that donates 100% of our profits to nonprofits. And so get to do that and travel to some of the nonprofits and do some speaking gigs about social responsibility and, and caring for people around the world. 
Uh, also this year, we're going to have 23 restaurants that have been open now in New Orleans, Houston, and Denver, which is really big. Um, been a part of that group uh, starting restaurants since I was 24 wow. years old. So you like um, have like a bunch of like team members, business members, and you all own like all these restaurants. Yeah, we're in a restaurant where we started a restaurant group, and so if you're in Denver, uh, some of the big names we just got some Bib Gorman uh, uh, accolades. So like Mister Oso and A Five and uh, Ashkara, and some of those are just super fun and really cool, and they're they're kind of all over the country now. And then um, Almost Famous Podcast, mm -hmm. uh, you're one of the best guests we get. Uh, it's yeah. always fun when you come on. You got to do it again soon. Anytime. And then married life's fun. Me and me and Jess are just kicking it here in Denver with our dog Waylon. And uh, marriage has been really like it's just a really. Uh, I'll say this. I don't. People probably forget. It's been really easy. Uh, mm -hmm. And not that we don't like try. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. I don't know. We get along really good. It's it's a great time. As my wife says, uh, you get to have a sleepover with your best friend every night, and that's pretty cool. I love that. That's great. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Everyone, go subscribe, tune into the Almost Famous podcast. Go follow Ben on Instagram. And thank you all so much for listening and watching. Give this video a thumbs up, rate, review, and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. See you later, Ben. See y'all.